Hello everyone, Sheik here with another Transformers view, and today I will be reviewing the Transformers Legacy United Vector Prime from, of course, the Cybertron Universe. Oh man, um, I had my doubts about this figure when he first when I first saw pictures of him. I was like, it doesn't look that great. Well, let's just say I now have three of these guys like they are just that cool in my opinion as you can see they are all just a little bit different one in the center is the closest to being unmodified this one is uh has the repro labels on them and the upgrade repro parts for the shins um i'm just gonna go ahead and give you guys a closer look at the detail i mean there's sticker there stickers there's a lot of stickers on the side there's stickers on the eyes um stickers here i really do like the it helps with like the filigree look i do like the way the stickers are on here although it does leave a little bit to be desired on the sides but i do like that because it does look a lot like the original cartoon i think they did a pretty good job on this this one right here is probably my pride and joy only because i spent well i mean it did take a while to put on the repro labels on the other one but this one is probably my favorite uh gave him a weathered look um i don't think he really looked quite that weathered in the cartoon but he definitely did look well like an ancient robot uh clockwork and gears and i absolutely love that so i tried to replicate it as best i could using a black paint wash uh, with a little bit of um i think brown and green mixed in to just liven up the color just to lighten up just a little bit i do love even though i don't like the hoses there and i'm probably gonna get an upgrade kit to cover this up to make it more accurate to the original i must say that does make them look fairly decent i think that actually looks pretty cool um i did paint these myself using acrylic um probably not the best paint to use but it's uh, what I had available and I wanted to experiment with it a little bit. I'm probably going to try to clear coat them at some point so that they don't get all damaged. But the wash I'm not as worried about because um, that all I have to do if it gets scraped off is just uh, rewash it essentially. So I mean it's not the end of the world. The only like I said would be redoing these is that took a long time. But I'd say that that is so satisfying. Especially when I do this uh let's see from behind uh it might be a little too bright to see properly or get the proper effect but it does have a kind of smoky translucent blue rather than just the full-on translucent metallic blue so i think that uh kind of gets closer to what this is showing off on the repro labels but still not quite there but Anyway, considering this is like the first custom I've done in like years and years, I think it's halfway decent. And my pride and joy of this set, and oh man, I'm so scared of putting it in his hand and taking it out because it is acrylic paint, is Rizzling, which I do believe is the name of his sword. And uh, of course, um, just uh, to do a side-by-side -side comparison, Here's what it looked, essentially looks like before, and that's what it looks like after. And then the hilt, the pommel of it, I think is the right word for it, is a little scratched up right there when I took it out of his hand. But as you can see, just how stark the difference is. I absolutely love the way that turned out. Now let's go ahead and bring back the standard one. Of course, he comes standard with a Cyber Planet key, which is... Ugh, which is done in the same translucent blue. And you can, if you look closely, you can see the Earth, um, uh, the Speed Planet key, Velocitron, Beast Planet, and Gigantion, but it's a lot harder to pick out just because it's shrunk down. But that, of course, as you can see, there are holes, right, or slots for the key. In some ways, I wish they had just hadn't bothered with the key or had done something just a little bit different because it breaks that up a bit but i still like it um regardless i do love how shiny and glossy and pearlescent i know it's not pearl color but just how shiny that um center orb is it just looks so nice um 
even like like I said, this is the stock figure uh, without really much done to it. And even then, I was really impressed with the figure. The biggest drawbacks, however, of the mold is the wings tend to pop off very easily, which is good if you want to swap them out for an upgrade kit. Which and then of course, another thing that's also a point of concern, and if you see it, um, there's a little bit of stress marks right there just from this being bent or pulled on a bit. If you're careful, obviously it's not really gonna be an issue. One last thing I wanna show off, uh, the difference between the Repro Label one and this one, the one that I've modified a bit. This one has not had anything shaved off on it. If you'll notice right here, there's this, which kind of stops this right here. And then there's also this slot or this little piece of plastic right there that also stops the rotation to a degree on the wing things, which um, does sort of limit the options for the posability of these wings. And then here um, with, with them shaved down, you can have them folded up a bit more. Granted, it is a little bit higher than uh, what was in the show, obviously. And another downside, uh, then you can see them poking up from the front, but if you have the much larger wings, if I remember right, the upgrade kit ones are significantly bigger. This could maybe help out there, but honestly, I'd still probably have them down like this. But even, even if you don't have them curled up like that, you can still bring them in just a little bit further and turn them in to make it look a little bit more like a cape or cloak or whatever. The kind of look that he had for comparison. The original, although it's not the Takara paint. So I, it the colors are a bit off and I really would love to get the Takara one, but now that I have three Legacy Evolution, I don't really see the point of getting yet another Vector Prime. Since uh, the original Vector Prime that I have came in a two-pack with another certain uh, Decepticon, I thought I may as well also do a quick comparison of him with Legacy United Starscream. And I think that they're actually in pretty decent scale together, and I think that's uh, pretty cool. But I guess to do a comparison between this Rizzling and this one, obviously the size is a big thing. Uh, the, it's shrunk down significantly, but also Vector Prime has also been shrink, shrunken down. The filigree has been simplified just a little bit, but not too terribly much. It is pretty much the same thing, just a little bit simplified. Another modification that I made is that I cut off the uh, vestigial parts from the Jaxus mold, but although I was tempted to do the same on this one and the other one, I am not going to do that for one detail that I will go ahead and point out as a difference between uh, the original and um, this one is that if you look at the sides of the legs, they're pretty much flat, but there's an upgrade kit that incorporates the, well, the hinge point and it has something like this that runs along the side. And that is what I'm, one of the ones I'm really looking forward to because it helps fill out the legs just a little bit more. Um, and I definitely want that. Um, if you haven't noticed the reason why this guy has fallen over because I have transformed him so many times because I absolutely think this mold is so fun to mess around with, even though it is not true to the original transformation. But this is one of the ones where I feel like they did take a little bit of artistic licensing in order to make it cheaper because, you know, I, I don't have Jaxxus, so I don't know exactly how he transforms. I'm sure it's somewhat similar, but... Considering what they were working with, I feel like they did a somewhat decent job, although they could have fixed the shins. That's the, my biggest gripe with the, that part of the mold. But my biggest praise is that pretty much every joint on this guy is pinned in. Like when I was looking, because when I was doing the washing of, when I was doing the washing of the other Vector Prime, I was wanting to take it apart as much as I could just to make it easier. But the only things I could, and see, yeah, these, like I said, these do not like to stay on. But when I was looking at things to pop off, it's only like here, 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 and then 
here on the wrist, but that one, but those are like really tiny. And then here, but also with the way the shoulders are, I don't even know if, I think this probably had to be assembled before the shoulder blade or shoulder guard was put up there. So they, pro you probably can't even get that mushroom peg off if you wanted to without breaking something. Like pretty much everything is pinned into place or screwed, which the only place where there seems to be screws is on his chest panel up in uh, here. Which is a one downside of the vehicle mode is that you there is those visible screws, but that's pretty much about it. Like, like I said, I've been kind of gushing about this figure. I thought I was not gonna like it very much, and that I was gonna probably end up getting rid of it. Articulation: the head is on a ball joint. He can look up and down. He gets a little bit of wibbly wobbly. His head can do a full 360. Arms can go out that far. Um, they can do a full 360 bicep rotation, overnight be bent at the elbow, wrist rotation, hands open up, which is really nice. Uh, I guess so you can do, I don't know, maybe a pose like this, where he's like holding his hand out. Like, um, I will say since there is no other rotation down here, you can't really do as much with it, but Still, nice articulation to have. You don't really get any butterfly movement for him to hold his sword better, but one thing that can give just a little bit, as long as you don't do it too much, although this is more like a transformation joint, is that you can pull this out ever so slightly so you can get a better angle to hold his sword with uh, both hands. Although, like I said, if you're not careful, it'll just pop all the way out. Uh, do, 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 do. Hit waist rotation. He can almost do the full splits for an old guy. I'd say that's pretty impressive. Thigh rotation. Overnight we bent at the knee. And ankle tilted. You can also move the foot forward and back a little bit, but that's also partly due to transformation, but still extra articulation if you need it. Now, unfortunately, there is no spot on robot mode to, um, attach a mini con safeguard or anything like that you could perhaps modify safeguard to put him in here i heard of someone doing something to theirs to get to go on his arm but i think that would be well kind of a shame to do it it's unless you have like a spare safeguard that you don't care about messing up a little bit i would love for them to release a micro masters or mini con or whatever they want to call it that's done up like safeguard that's Obviously, they make them a lot smaller than the mini cons they used to make. So, if they did make Safeguard, he'd actually probably be about the right size for Vector Prime. Anyway, let's get him transformed. And here we have Vector Prime in his spaceship mode. And as you can see, he is, uh, of course, a bit sleeker than his original uh, counterpart. And he is, unfortunately, the front of the craft, I'd say, is a bit shorter and stubbier. But I'd say it does carry the feel of the original Vector Prime fairly well. And I will say one thing that is sort of an improvement on the design, I think, is the engines right here where it actually looks like a uh, flying spacecraft. Um, and, 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 and even though it's not as far back as it would have been for the original legs, I still feel like it gives the impression of something underneath, sort of like on the original Vector Prime. And another thing that I think is pretty cool is that if you want to, I don't know if any other YouTubers have pointed this out, but it, to me it seems pretty obvious that if you want to, you can push that down or you can push it pretty much all the way down there 
to give it a more original Vector Prime look. And I think that that's actually uh, pretty cool. Um, and I think that's a pretty good representation of uh, Vector Prime with the exception of uh, th like nothing's perfect, but I think that this is actually pretty decent considering what they could have done or how the worst they could have probably done. Um, as you can see, there is a spot to put the cyber planet key, but um, I don't prefer to really keep it there. Like I honestly, with, I don't know how often he used the cyber planet key in the show. It's been a little bit since I watched it. Although I will say um, I absolutely love the uh, Vector Prime character. I, I always thought he looked cool before I even really saw the show because I grew up with the toys, didn't really go up the show. I only watched the show like maybe uh, five, six months ago completely for the first time I've seen an episode here and there, but I finally got the whole show and watched it and I absolutely adore Vector Prime. Like he's probably my favorite character. I, don't get me wrong, I like a lot of the other characters, but he's like my favorite character. I absolutely love him. Anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and bring in the original Vector Prime, and let's just point out some of the differences. Obviously, one thing that seems a little bit self-apparent is that the uh, wings are probably a little bit smaller, but then again, I... They're... Okay, so... I think what happens is, is that the replacement ones for the upgrade kits probably make them about the size of the original Vector Prime wings, which would technically be a little bit too big for them if they're shrinking them down to be more in scale with everyone else. I will say I do like this a lot more because it's lo uh, more elongated. I do like that and I remember seeing the concept art, the original concept art for Legacy United Vector Prime was going to be more like this. Just get a little bit of look at the details. Um, obviously here you can pretty much see almost all of the robot. Like you can see arms, chest, waist, back of the head, the entire cape that pretty much unfolds and covers his head. Like, he is one of the simplest Transformers from the Cybertron cartoon. But, I mean, still very fun. Like, I absolutely love the spaceship. And if, and, we, and I know that I already did a review of him, but if you can see just all the clockwork detail in there, it's just absolutely stunning. And also, it's a very clean underside on here rather than the quite apparent uh, robot chest right there on this Vector Prime. Like that is my biggest gripe for the vehicle mode is that. And then also you don't have the dishes right here and the apparent guns um, that would have been up here or I guess further, realistically further back here. Um, I, like I said, I still really like this guy. I think he's really cool, but I wish they had gone, been a little bit more faithful to the original toy. But I'm sure there's so many, maybe not YouTubers, but fans giving the new one a huge amount of grief. But the biggest thing that I absolutely love is that if you notice, there's a similar peg on here that is also right here, and it's in a similar spot. So they... I do believe intentionally designed this with the idea that you can give, although it's a little big for him, you can put the original safeguard onto your Legacy United Vector Prime. And I think that is absolutely amazing. Um, of course, obviously the colors, at least for this, at least for the American release, not the Takara one, uh, obviously suits this one a lot better but I just oh man I just think that that's so cool um man I've just been rambling and rambling gushing absolutely gushing but I will say that this transformation is a little more um involved in the sense that it's not as I mean obviously I guess you could say obviously those are legs obviously these are the arms but I like the way that the head is tucked away a little bit better um I like how like I said, there's thrusters back here rather than on back here. There's just, you can see his fists and just his thighs and I guess his crotch. I mean, not much is really hidden on the original Vector Prime. But then again, he's not really trying to disguise himself. But I do like 
the feeling of that they have on the new one of an actual spaceship rather than just I, I mean that's not to say you don't get spaceship vibes from him it's just uh, not as powerful as on this where there's where there's obvious thrusters right there um, oh, yeah, and before I forget and keep rambling on, there is storage for the sword, which can go right there on the underside of the wing. And the parts I shaved off the plastic on, there, uh, because of this tab right there, it still locks it into place well enough to where you don't have to worry. If you decide to make that modification, that's not really going to negatively impact the ability for it to maintain its uh, vehicle mode. And for another comparison, Starscream. And I think they actually look pretty cool together. Um, I really look forward to hopefully more uh, Legacy, or maybe not as specifically Legacy, because Legacy is coming to an end pretty soon from what I've heard. But uh, whatever they call the line as it continues, I really hope we see some more from the Cybertron uh, series maybe a redo of the leader class cybertron optimus prime that would be pretty cool um uh, leo breaker scattershot landmine and they can maybe even do the stoplight transformer that uh showed up in a couple of the episodes so uh, that is about it for Transformers Legacy United Vector Prime, and I know I droned on and on this episode, but if you like this review and you'd like to see more, please click that like and subscribe button to see more. Until next time, have a good one, everyone.